Ho, ladies and gents, boys and girls. It's early Saturday morning and it's already hot down here in Florida. Hot and humid. So I thought I'd do something uh, kind of quiet today. Stay out of the heat. And through a, a credit from an anonymous subscriber, I was able to purchase some new books, new to me, these have been in publication for a while, um, to review for my viewers and subscribers. Isn't that cool? And I appreciate the anonymous um, donor who has given me the credit on Amazon to purchase these books. I have three books. I have um, Practical Antenna Handbook by Joseph Carr and George Hipsley. Probably pronounced that wrong. And that's the first one. Here's the second one, which is AWR Wire Antenna Classics. We'll be talking about that. And here is the follow up to this one More Wire Classic. More Wire Antenna Classics, Volume 2. Hmm. I mean, I guess this should have been marked Volume 1. But I guess they didn't know at the time that they were going to do a volume two. And I haven't seen a volume three. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick review of these two because they're basically the same type of book. And on a different show, I'm going to do this one, which is about antennas, but it's totally different than these two. So we're going to set this guy aside. We're going to do that in the next video. And we're going to look at these two guys, which I said, as I said, they are basically the same, except this one came out a year later because this one was so popular. And what it is, is the ARRL put this out, and it's a collection of articles from QST, which is a publication put out by the ARRL for amateur radio operators. And of course, the information applies to shortwave listeners because they're dealing with uh, basically, for the most part, for antennas for a HF receptions. And this, the first one that came out is, oh gosh, I hate when they uh, number it chapter number and page number because you have no number no idea what the number of pages are but it's a pretty good book big print and uh, has a lot of articles about building antennas this is about building antennas and it gives you detailed instructions of you know the measurements how to hang it up and um, some test results where the guy tested it and all kinds of antennas from very simple antennas to some that are a little more complicated but they're not real complicated so basically if you can build anything you can build almost any of these antennas in this book and they have antennas for specific frequencies like the one I just saw was um, was uh, lost okay where'd it go oh I just had it oh I hate when that happens well anyway the one I just had there a second ago yeah I lost it was for 80 meters so that means its dimensions and everything is set up for receiving on 80 meters which is about three point eight megahertz HF band. Now keep in mind a lot of these antennas uh, are for the amateur radio bands but they will work in outside those bands just as they are tuned for best performance at the amateur bands 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, whatever. Like here's one for 160 meters. And I'm trying to see if 
I saw one on here before. There's a 30 meter antenna. But I, there's also some um, some antennas. Now here's here's a room. Inexpensive traps for wire antennas. And the reason you use these traps is because if you can't have an antenna long enough to fit in your yard for a certain band, such as 80 meters, 40 meters, you can use what's called traps to use shorter lengths of wire and get the same general um, performance. It'll be a little less because it's not the ideal length. So that's that one. And then the follow-up one, which is more wire antennas, is basically the same thing except it goes over different antennas. And like I say, there's a lot of details of how do you construct. Now here's one that you might be interested in. It is an all-band antenna. So this works to see. Um, this works 80 and 40 meters, and it tells you uh, can set it up to work at 20 meters and 15 meters. And like I say again, these will also work at frequencies in between. They're just not peaked for every frequency. And it gives you some plots, you know, what kind of performance you should expect, and. So if you're in, if you're looking to build some antennas yourself, this is the whole concept. Now here's one. Here's a zip cord antenna made out of the zip, <coughs> excuse me, the zip cord you put on appliances, lamps. And uh, the question is, do they work? And then this article tells you how they work, well, how well they work. And uh, whether it's worth your try time trying to build one. And then uh, here's an 80 meter inverted V. Now, for instance, um, 80 meters means that it will work at 80 meters and below because the other frequencies, 40 meters, so on down, other bands, are a derivative of 80 meters. So. When it says 80 meters, that means it works up to 80 meters and is peaked best performance at 80 meters. So uh, both of the, I think both of these books are excellent if you're looking into building your own antennas and you're looking for pretty much simple antennas to build and some information about them and some dimensions, some discussion of it. This one, the retail price of this first one is $14, and the follow-up one is $17.95. And, of course, on Amazon, they're a lot less than that. So I definitely would recommend getting both of these books if you're interested in building antennas yourself. Okay, so that's the review of these two. And then I'll do my next video on this guy here, which is totally different, same subject, but totally different than these two. And I'll, in my next video, I'll tell you how they're different. That's the show for today. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're going to have a giveaway here uh, coming up. I haven't decided exactly when or what it's going to be, but thanks for watching. Bye.